Watching the Sunday politics for Yorkshire, Lincolnshire and the North Midlands coming up today. The fracking protesters may have been released from prison this week, but the heated debate continues over this controversial energy source. Now it's the appointment of a former Labour MP as the government shale gas commissioner. Very, very disappointed. I wish you hadn't taken that job and uh, I am opposed to fracking and so is the Labour Party. We'll be asking Natasha Engel herself about the job and what it entails, plus the big society in action. Is this Lincolnshire village the most volunteer-run community in the country? We meet the men and women who run everything from the police station to the local football school. We're joined in the studio today by the Green Party's Natalie Bennett, a former leader of her party who's now based in Sheffield, and by Julian Sturdy, the Conservative MP for York Outer. The future energy security for the entire country remains a hot topic. The two main political parties have opposite views when it comes to the extraction of shale gas from under the ground. Now, the Conservatives see it as a way to guarantee power supplies to homes and businesses. Labour, meanwhile, say we shouldn't lock ourselves into fossil fuel energy. Now, the government's appointed a shale gas commissioner, but that's also proving controversial. Geologists say it's impossible to say precisely just how much shale gas is in the ground below our part of the world, but surveys have revealed there are dozens of potential locations where it can be found. Now, to get that gas out of the ground is what's controversial. Water, sand and chemicals are injected into rocks at high pressure deep underground. The rocks fracture and release the gas, which is piped back to the surface. The government insists it's a safe process, but others fear the process could pollute water supplies. James Vincent reports. The F word is getting a lot of people worked up. Fracking is happening again over in Lancashire, and shale gas extraction, if you don't want to use the F word, will be coming soon to North Yorkshire and North Derbyshire. Jeremy Corbyn's been in North Derbyshire this week telling campaigners that his party would ban it. I've told them what our policy is, which we would end fracking because we're concerned about the environmental impact of it, the danger to groundwater and the danger to air quality at the head of it. This constituency is North East Derbyshire and until last year it had a Labour MP. Natasha Engel has previously worked for fracking company Ineos and is now the government's shale gas commissioner. I think it's a virtue that I've done it since. It means that I have seen it from the point of view of being an MP in a constituency that has a fracking application, but I've also seen what it's like from inside the industry. I worked for INEOS for six months and it was really fascinating. Some of her former colleagues and protesters in her old constituency don't see it like that. I think it's completely inappropriate. I do not think that politicians, that the Tory government essentially should have put someone in place who is lobbying the public for fracking. For someone who represents this constituency, North East Derbyshire, there's a huge anti-fracking movement where she did represent it. Um, I think it's an absolute disgrace that she's now thrown in a lot with the frackers. Being a Labour Party member, I'm very disappointed. I feel betrayed by her actions because she went against the agreed party policy. Uh, so she let a lot of people down in this area. I'm very, very disappointed. I wish she hadn't taken that job and uh, I am opposed to fracking and so is the Labour Party. She's been paid by INEOS, she's worked for INEOS before. Do you think that's an impartial role? Do you think she can do that role? Well, if you're coming from the industry and from the company, then it's quite difficult to see how you can be completely impartial on it. But the Conservatives don't necessarily think that Natasha Engel's new job is meant to be an impartial one. I don't think Natasha is an independent person in this debate. Clearly, she's appointed by the government. The government's strategy is to push ahead with shale gas. I think she's an intermediary. She's independent of the regulators and independent of the producers. But, I, but definitely there to try and help the government roll out its policies on shale gas exploration, which I support. We need gas. We might as well produce it as import it. You people are fantastic. Fracking is a huge issue for people in North East Derbyshire and it's argued it decided the last election here. People voted against Labour for the first time in nearly 90 years. They now have a Conservative MP that's against his own party on fracking. But Labour claims 
the government won't listen. They haven't even been listening to their own Tory MP, to be perfectly honest, who uh, claims that he's against fracking. Um, in fact... You say he claims he's against fracking. What do you well, mean by that? Well, he seems to... He, say, he, he says that he's against fracking, and if that's his position, then, then so be that. But all I would say is since that position has been established, his government have actually pushed ahead faster with fracking. I'm hoping we can, can change the government's policy and the government's view on this. What we don't need, however, is lots of people turning up for one day a year, making lots of statements and then disappearing again. What we actually need is the thing that's happening in my community at the moment, which is people of all parties and none coming together and saying fracking is not the thing for North East Derbyshire. Fracking could start in Derbyshire as early as the new year, and while it's a battleground for the politicians, it's also a battleground for protesters. And more people in our part of the world are preparing for the front line to come to them. James Vincent reporting, and we're joined from Westminster today by Natasha Engel, the shale gas uh, commissioner. Um, Natasha Engel, Jeremy Corbyn says he's disappointed by your appointment. Have you betrayed the many Labour voters you used to represent? Absolutely not. I, I spent uh, 12 years in North East Derbyshire as the MP campaigning to get good jobs into North East Derbyshire. I mean, in the mid, in the mid 80s when the pits closed, um, that was the main employer in North East Derbyshire. And since then, we've had very few good jobs. And this was the first opportunity um, that we had some really good jobs coming to North East Derbyshire. So, you know, I was <laughs> having stood on that ticket for so many years, I was delighted that finally there was the actual prospect of getting some good jobs into North East Derbyshire. But you're hardly impartial, are you? Because you're there to promote the shale gas industry. It's a PR job, isn't it? I'm not there to promote the industry, absolutely not, but I'm not impartial. I definitely support uh, the exploration of shale gas as long as it's done safely. I am independent of government, but I'm not impartial in the same way as those people who, you know, who really oppose shale gas under any circumstances. They're also not impartial. They have a point of view. I have a point of view. Um, and my role is actually just to widen out the debate. At the moment, there's a very dominant voice, which is the voice of those people who oppose fracking at any cost. And I'm there just to make sure that there is another, you know, another side given to the story. And I think that's really important. Well, Natalie Bennett, we know you're opposed to fracking, but do you accept it's a good thing the government has at least some, appointed someone who knows the industry to put its case forward? Well, I would say what's happening in Natasha's case is very disturbing because we have a situation where we have the gamekeeper turned poacher. You know, the fact that we could have someone who's an MP representing an area that's very strongly anti-fracking uh, from a party that now has taken a position of being anti-fracking then goes to work for the industry and then goes to work for the government, you know, that's very disturbing. And if you look back to 2011, Caroline Lucas, the Green MP, did some freedom of information work that showed there were 50 people uh, from nuclear industry, nuclear energy industry and from fossil fuel industries who were working for the government, creating the, re the regulations that are now described as the gold standard regulations. Uh, they were being paid by the industry and working for the government. Now we've gone for the next step, is you've gone from promoting the industry by being paid by the industry doing that, and now we're in a situation where you are being paid by the government to promote the industry. And I think that's something that people were rightly very disturbed about. Do you want to respond to that? Yeah, I do. Um, I think by the same token, I don't think anybody who kind of um, supports green issues when they're in Parliament and then goes and works for a green NGO, I mean, I, I don't see the difference. Uh, it's something that I really believed in. I wouldn't have gone and worked for the industry if I didn't believe that fracking was something that was very important for our energy security. And as long as it's done safely, could actually really contribute to meeting our very challenging climate change targets. Now, that's something that's very often left out of the debate about the role of gas in meeting our energy targets our climate change targets and okay. that's a conversation that I'd really like to have. I, well I'd very much like to have that conversation first of all you know, what happened when we saw the first fracking last week in Lancashire that's a climate crime we cannot be creating a new fossil fuel industry at a point when we have to decarbonize our economy and do it fast and secondly Absolutely. I want to pick up your point before about good jobs so-called good jobs what the fracking industry creates are jobs for lorry drivers and security guards lots of security guards. They're not, I think, anyone's idea of a good job or likely to be well paid. What we need to do is invest in home energy efficiency, invest in renewables. That creates lots of opportunities for well, small local businesses, absolutely. skilled jobs, trades, people getting absolutely. trained. There's huge opportunities there, an alternative to this, this fossil 
dinosaur industry. Absolutely, but I don't like the snobbery implied in that lorry drivers and security guards aren't good jobs. Well, well I, mean, I would say good are, jobs are well-paid jobs perfectly, with careers. They're perfectly good jobs. What we're talking about is developing an industry where you've got uh, rig builders, you've got a steel industry potentially, you've got engineering. I'd love to see this be the sort of the, the future of girls into engineering um, that you know this potentially could create. We're crying out for engineers, and this is something that you let know me, we could really have renewable energy. Can I just bring Can I just bring in Julian Sturdy at this point? Is the fact that the government has created a so-called shale gas commi commissioner proof that the government is losing the propaganda battle with shale gas? Well, I don't, <clears throat> I don't think though, it's any surprise that when the government appoints a, a commissioner on this, it's, it's going to be someone who is supporting fracking. It would be a bigger surprise if we'd, if, if we'd appointed someone who was against fracking. I, I would agree with that one. Let, let's yes. be honest about this. But um, you, don't have a, you don't have a commissioner for, for solar energy, for wind no. energy. Why fracking? Well, I, th I, think, I think there is a need because I think when you look at the moment, the arguments on either side are, so po are becoming so polarised. Mm. Um, so I think Natasha's got a huge job on her hands, um, but we've got to the communities that are going to be affected by this, the communities where um, applications are coming in, they need to feel the trust that they can have their voice heard within the planning process and make sure their concerns are heard. And I am, I am fearful at the moment that that doesn't always well, many happen. many councils say they're being frozen well, out from I, the planning I, 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 As I say, I, I am fearful of that at the moment. And I think that that is where we're getting very polarised arguments and there's a huge job um, within, the, within, within government to try and win the argument. So just a really quick question to Natalie. How much of our total energy consumption last year came from wind? Um, How much? A total energy, I don't know the precise figure, it won't be very high, but it's moving up very fast. Have, have, what a, we guess, have, to have do, a guess, have a but, guess, Natalie. But, but what we have to Just do... Just tell us, tell up. us, tell us. It's 2.2%. We are a long way away from having our energy produced by renewables. I totally agree. Let's massively invest in renewables, but in the meantime, let's have domestically produced gas to displace uh, the gas that we're importing to make sure that we can meet our climate change targets because gas is far cleaner than coal. We're going to have to leave that. Natasha Engel, I know not everyone will agree with you, but you've come in and argued your cause today, so thank, thank you for you. that. Thank you. Thank you. You're watching the Sunday Politics for Yorkshire and Lincolnshire.